So my son started school a few days ago. He started uh, a few days later than the other kids because we switched schools due to the new location we're in. But um, I noticed a lot, a lot of walkers, um, but young kids walking, younger than Aislinn. He's 12. Um, Aislinn is not a typical 12 year old. He's very, um, you know, a lot of kids today are more mature than they were when we were kids. Aislinn is not one of them. He, um, he's a very vulnerable, very naive, very sweet, incredibly trusting little boy. He knows a little bit about what I do in my field. Um, he knows that I'm a human trafficking survivor, but he doesn't, he doesn't know what that means. Thank, thankfully. Um, I mean, I, I do tell him some things and we do have a lot of talks because he needs to be safe, but still he thinks everyone who says a kind word is, is kind. And even if they're mean, deserve forgiveness. And I love that he has such an incredibly beautiful heart, but again, um, even, even with all our talks and me teaching him some self-defense and what to do in those situations. I know my son and I think he would be a very easy target. Um, I don't post videos or pictures of my son online for reasons, uh, for a lot of reasons. And you know, this video is for parents who seriously need a wake up call. Okay. I know it's hard for some of you parents who've never been in this situation. So you, you think that it's not going to happen to you. You know, I, I, I just turned 50 September 3rd and more than half my life, three quarters of my life was spent enduring sexual violence. Um, you know, I, I don't think people realize just how serious human trafficking is. And even if you live in a small town, like we only have like 55,000 people here, which is not a lot and human trafficking is very bad here. So I don't care where you live. It happens everywhere. It does not just happen to kids who get kidnapped off the streets and taken to another country. Like that does happen a lot, but you know, nowadays people aren't educated enough as to how it happens. The most, um, typical way nowadays is for young girls, especially, um, in their young teens, early twenties, meeting the boy of their dreams who absolutely sweeps them off their feet, brings them, uh, uh, you know, goes home to meet the parents. The parents fall in love with what a gentleman he is and, and how, um, respectful and how he dotes on their daughter and, you know, um, spoils her with gifts and takes her to nice restaurants and buys her clothes. And that right there, I, I know it's hard because, you know, how do you tell the difference between genuine genuinity and someone who's taking um, advantage of your daughter and who eventually is going to traffic her. And I know that's, it's really scary, but you have, it doesn't mean that you have to not trust this boy. You just have to be very aware. You have to be incredibly involved in your children's life. Communication nowadays is not good. I understand that when we have teen kids, they don't want to talk to their parents, but it's important that you do it anyways, because there are signs. Okay. Like 
when when they're together after a couple months and and he starts being more possessive and you know keeping her wanting to be with her all the time and you know coming between their family um, you know keeping her away from her friends and then eventually she needs to pay him back for everything um, it'll start with a favor small favors and you know like for me it was that way but it was more of a father figure who ended up um, the first time I had to pay him back we went to um, a guy's house and he had a man waiting there for me for both of them to be serviced um, and I, I, I will share that. I will start sharing my story. You know, people keep asking me, you know, you, you do all this advocating, but you don't share what happened to you. And I just realized that that's true. And I, I want to be very transparent, which is why I, I started this new series. So, um, I, the next few videos will definitely be about that. Um, but back to my son, we argue all the time because he wants so badly to be a big boy and walk to school. And today, for the first time, he got very angry with me and he stormed out. And um, I, he didn't, he didn't know, but I followed behind him. My son, I want to think that I want him to think that he's a big boy and that that he can do this. And I and I want, I want to share that. I want him. I want him to feel like like he is capable um but trust me you still need to follow them to school and make sure that they get there okay even if you f follow way behind stop letting your damn kids walk to school by themselves you know especially when they're like 13 and under and do not send them to school unless you have had several talks with them that that they open up to you, that they will share things with you, that they know how to protect themselves, how to be hyper vigilant. You know, I see these fucking little kids that are like nine, 10 years old walking to school by themselves. What is wrong with you parents? Like you got to stop this. Okay. We don't live in a safe world anymore. And that doesn't mean that you have to be fearful and live your life sheltered. It just means being hyper vigilant, especially when it comes to your kids. Okay, so just I, I, if you have questions, please just message me and ask me. But if you want your kids to learn some independence, I get that. My son wanted that. He's 12. He deserves that. But I'm still going to follow him to school and make sure that he gets there safely. So if you if your kids want that that independence allow them to have it as long as you have the conversation you teach them about self-defense and what to do in this situation but you're also there to make sure that they get to school safely please I don't care where you fucking live I promise you human trafficking is happening in your town sorry my phone is about to die Sorry guys, my bad. Um, just, just be aware and I cannot stress to you enough how important it is for you guys to talk to your kids and make sure they know what to do in a situation. If someone comes up to them and tries to lure them or sh gives them candy or a puppy or, you know, my, my, uh, your, your mom told me to come pick you up. The one thing that I have that I made with Aislinn, we have a safe word and only, I don't let anybody, um, pick him up or drop him off. Like I do all that, but, um, may, we have a safe word. If somebody does not know that safe word then he doesn't go with them and he runs away screaming. He calls uh, fire. He says fire because you know, most people that say help, unfortunately people don't always answer to that. If it's fire, people will take notice. So he is to scream fire and run away and go to uh, a build like a, a business or school or whatever. 